First thing, looking at my script, I got a script again, is my main axe. Ugh, Shires. True bore valves. This is an older set. This is from pre patented age. Patent pending uh, is on the valve caps. Ooh, they're dirty. Um, I have another set that's heavy that they have the patent, but uh, these are the original to the valve set. So these are like 10 years old or so. Got them used. They're still really great. They've been really well taken care of. And uh, as a bass player, I've pretty much just played rotors for my entire career on a King and a Bach and then a, uh, like a Yamaha in there somewhere and a Holton and then another Bach and then another Bach and another Bach. And I felt like I needed to get away from rotors because I like them. They're pretty quick, um, but they kind of limit you dynamically, you know, below a certain point. Um, in the range, not dynamically below a certain point, but I had to get away from them. And I thought about axials, uh, Thayer valves, as they're also known, uh, Shires Edwards, Bach, OE Thayers, all those kind of things. I thought about Hagmans, I thought about Rotaxes, which are also rotors, but they're better. Um, all sorts of things. But I really only ended up with these because they were the right price. I, I think I'd also like Thayers and Hagmans, but, um, I couldn't find a good set for a good price, so this is what I have. So I got Shires, Axials, I have a Shires C tuning slide, it's just what I have. It works. Um, I think someday I'll get a Bach tuning slide that fits Shires valve section. Um, it has to be reversed, normal, normal Bach tuning slides have this on both ends instead of the receiver. So I think I'll get one of those one of these days, um, but for now it's just what I have. Um, I'm using a Corporation Bach slide. It's uh, pretty much lacquer free. I don't care about lacquer. It makes no difference to me. Um, it's a good playing slide. It's pretty quick. I have a dent up here somewhere around third position. There it is, right here. Uh, fell off during rehearsal once, I think. But right now it's pretty great. I'm going to get that taken out soon enough. It also has fittings because it has a Shires up upper cork barrel, which is this guy. It has fittings for Shire's lead pipes, so um, I can use Shire's lead pipes. And right now I have a B2.5, which is just a little bit above the, like, the middle pipe, which is the 2. Um, I like the 2 in pretty much everything. That's what I used for the last year or so on um, one of my other box, which I'll talk about in a second. But right now I feel like the 2.5 is a little bit better since I just moved to lower altitude. I can use more air more consistently. I'm using a little bit larger mouthpiece than I used to. And uh, I feel like the tube is a little bit constricting if I wanted to play loud. And yeah, I'm using 2.5. I also have a 2.5L and a 2L, but I think I just sold both of them. The L pipes are a little bit longer and they just feel really weird to me, so I, I just got rid of them. Um, yes, so let's slide this, this, okay. The bell is a Corporation Bach bell. Corporation, uh, I said that about the slide already. Corporation means it was made in the late 60s, very late 60s, uh, 70s, up until a certain point. I'm not totally certain on the dates, but that's right after the Elkhart period where they were making instruments. And Elkhart, I think I have that wrong. I think... I meant New York. Anyway, it's right after they moved to Indiana. I think it was Indiana. Corporation things are better, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. Right after the corporation era, they were bought out by UMI, who owns everybody, and the quality kind of decreased, and it hasn't been the same since really until maybe very recently. And before a corporation era is like the Mount Vernon in New York era where they were just like fantastically good because it was pretty much a custom shop. And so Corporation Air Horns are really, they're not super hard to find, but they're still really high quality. Um, and they're, you know, consistent-ish. Box are not totally consistent. But I have one of these bells, just in yellow, um, original lacquer, fitted for Shires mounts by someone else. I got this from someone else. And it plays pretty well. Um, 
I think once I get a Bach tuning slide, it'll play better. And I'm thinking about getting a Shires Bell that'll play better with a Shires tuning slide. So yeah, this is my main setup. I use a Greg Black 1 and 3 8 G mouthpiece. It has my name on it. It costs no money, so why not? It's in silver plate. I like silver plate. Better than gold plate because I play pretty much dry. I don't like the mouthpiece to go slipping, sliding all over my face. Um, it's a little bit bigger than a one and a half G by most standards. It's more of a one and a fourth G size if you're going straight by box sizes, except it's a little bit better designed. It's not just like bored out. It's not just larger. It's better designed. Um, I heard a famous guy, not super famous, but a really good player des uh, describe this as a large small mouthpiece so it's still kind of in the realm of one and a half g's almost up to one and a fourth but it's not in the big mouthpieces category um before this i used to play hammond 19 size mouthpieces which are one and a half g rims but i used like a, a little bit deeper cup and those were really good but uh i just kind of outgrew them and things became really difficult to play so i've moved up and the Greg Black gives me a really nice sound, lots of overtones, and the playability is just great, so nothing to worry about. And you may have noticed I use a Sheridan Brass Ghetto Grip. It's just a little piece of aluminum with some leather on it with some padding, and you just like kind of clip it to your slide, and it provides a lot of support. It's not perfect. Uh, you're supposed to rest it against the slide here, but then I can't press the lever down. I'm not sure. I might be doing something wrong. But I can still use it to hold up the horn. And uh, it really gets the job done. I also have a Yamaha strap. I think it's actually here on my desk, yes. I also have a Yamaha strap, which goes around the mouthpiece, etc. I've used one of these for the last five years. Um, and they're really good, too. But uh, I think they... I've heard things about them pulling... Since they pull on the mouthpiece, that's how they distribute the weight. It kind of almost puts a slide out of alignment after a while. So, you know, I don't think I had problems with that on these slides, but I think on my Shire slide, I may have tweaked it a little bit. And it's not quite the same amount of support. I think I like this better. Um, so, yeah, this is my main setup. I use it for everything right now, which is not to say very much, but... Uh, I'll give you a little couple examples. I'm playing Mahler 1 soon. So I'll play a little excerpt from the first movement. That's in unison with all the other trombones. Nice high A. Uh, excerpt from the last movement, I think. Um, see if I nail this. Yeah, I nailed it. Awesome. Uh, yeah, this altogether, this horn feels really good right now. Uh, it's I don't really like mixing and matching. Right now, I have half Bach, half Shire's parts, and that isn't exactly optimum. But right now, this stuff seems to work really well together. I also have a Shire slide, which I'll show in a moment. But it, um, it seems a little bit constricted. It doesn't work with the 2.5 lead pipe that I like to use right now. It seems to get a little squirrely and out of control at higher volumes. Um, and the flexibility just goes out the window. So right now it's a Shire slide. It really holds together at high volumes. Um, and I'll play a little lyric excerpt for you. Um, Bastasia by Steven Verhelst. Uh, this is on YouTube somewhere. Wow, that's one of my favorite lyric parts in any piece. That's just a trombone quartet with bass trombone and tuba soloists. 